In the mid-1800s, after economic depression, settlers were seeking a new beginning. But there was only one way to travel from Missouri to Oregon, the Oregon Trail. I'm sure you all remember playing the Oregon Trail video game as kids and dying from dysentery. <laughs> but in actuality, the Oregon Trail was quite a serious thing. It was a vicious journey that took four to six months. Without refrigeration and only very few places to get supplies, preparing food for the journey was vital to their survival. For your quick fire challenge, we want you to create a modern dish using only the ingredients that the settlers would have had on the Oregon Trail. Each person would have had a stockpile of items such as flour, lard, coffee, molasses, dry fruit, meats, and herbs. Chefs, the pantry will be off limits this challenge. We want to see what you can come up with using these staples from that historic journey. The winner of this quick fire will earn an advantage in the next elimination challenge. You have 30 minutes to create your modern Oregon Trail dishes. Giddy up. Your time starts now. Good luck. Wow. wow. That whole thing, eh? Oh, yeah. There were no things like regular oil or fresh citrus. I have to be creative, imparting flavors in ways that I wouldn't have even thought of. Bring it on. This is weird way to shop. This is just a habit. I am missing soy sauce, sake, miso, mirin, Japanese ingredients in general. <laughs> I'm going to do a parsnip puree with boiled hazelnuts and salmon, tossed in jerky salt. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to blend the jerky and here my portion salmon in it, giving it kind of that smoky umami flavor. Did you get the whiskey to drink, or are you going to cook with it? I'm going to cook with it and then drink it. <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up, they had a walnut tree, and I used to eat fresh walnuts. I was thinking about making a young romesco, but with walnuts. You need the salmon? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I'm gonna do like a walnut pepper sauce, grill the salmon, and do a parsnip crisp. Nice. Let me get this going. 20 minutes, guys. Where can I go? I mean, just go in. <laughs> People on the trail really ate for survival. So I'm making a trail ride porridge because it's something that's really hearty. I'm gonna experiment with putting a fish flavor base at the bottom of my porridge. John, what are you missing from your ingredients? Oh, real acid. Yes! Real yes! Acid. Yes! <laughs> my dish really needs fresh acid, and there isn't any, but there is citric acid. John, did you get citric acid? Yeah, I did. Here. One wrong move with citric acid, and you, you can't turn back. I'll put it down there so I don't use it like it's salt. 10 minutes left. 10 minutes heard. I wish I had lemon. I love acid because it breaks off the heaviness of anything. I realized there's cranberries. They're sweet, but they're tart. So I threw that into my sauce to try to brighten it up. Oh, so hot. Can I kill a little thing? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm just going You're good. I like it when you throw things. Ow! Thanks, y'all, for shoving my way to the back. That wasn't me, chef. I promise. Can't hold me down. Five minutes, guys. Yeah. Ah. The salmon looks nice. As a dish, I actually really like it. Perfect. Three, two, one. Time's up. Hands up, utensils down. Huh. Jamie, come on up. You got it, Jamie. I got this. My belly got it. <laughs> Thank you. This looks beautiful. I made a fancier salmon with a walnut pepper sauce. What's the acid in your dish, Jamie? I put cranberries in there, and then I use lemon oil. What's the crispy stuff on the top? That's parsnip. What did you make for us, Shoda? I did jerky cured salmon with parsnip apricot a puree. I'm curious about jerky cured salmon. I got the beef jerky, and I grinded it up, and I just kind of cured it, let it sit for about 10 minutes. I made a trail ride porridge with fire roasted curry squash and a hazelnut and bacon relish. In the porridge, I have dried herring. 30 minutes is not a long time to cook the squash. How'd you do it? Fire roasting. Shoda helped me with that. He pushed my pan all the way in the back. I didn't push it. I think she means that in a good way. Oh. In a good way. I got you, girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wow. This dish was meant for a hearty appetite. Go bigger, go home, right? <laughs> this is a campfire trout with an Oregon Trail salsa matcha. Since there's no cooking oil, I used the lard as the base of the sauce. What is the acid in this dish? I took some of the lemon syrup and cut it with citric acid. Thank you so much. 
I'm actually very impressed what you guys have been able to accomplish in mere 30 minutes. Thank you, Chef. There were a couple that were less successful than the others. Shoda, the salmon ate a little dry. I don't know if it had something to do with the curing in advance of cooking it. Understood. Don, that dish really could have been more successful if you had used that herring as a counterpoint to that porridge. I agree. Boiling the fish with the porridge really made it too fishy. We did love the other two. We thought your dishes were creative and most of all, modern. Jamie. Salmon was cooked great. The fried parsnips on top really added that textural element. This is a modern take on what you would find on the trail. There was bits of sweetness, there was bits of acid, and altogether it worked really well. Thank you. Vitaly, as our guest judge, you have the honor of telling us who won this quick fire. The chef who won the challenge today showed the versatility of the ingredients in a modern way. And that chef is... Jamie. <laughs> After the last challenge, I needed that boost of confidence. Gregory and Vitaly, thank you so thank you, much. Thank you, Thank you,